بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمد شاكرين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكرك الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغافلون Today uh, we are discussing an important issue after a year, nearly a year has gone by since the current war in Gaza has been ongoing since October the 7th last year 2023 and of course while the world has been asleep aside from those activists who have attempted to participate in creating awareness with regard to Gaza and the Palestinian struggle. And I would say this is not only a Palestinian struggle. This stage that we are at at the moment is a time of war between al-haq wal batil truth and falsehood. There is no in between. There is only the side of truth and the side of falsehood. There is only the side of al-Islam and the side of al-Kufr, unbelief. There is only the side of al-Mahdi and the side of a dajjal There is only the side of al-Iman, belief, and the side of al-Nifaq wal-Kufr. This time that we live in, this current war distinguishes between the men and the false people. And what has been going on for nearly a year, and of course what has happened since October the 7th should awaken most of the people who are there to stand for the truth. There have been many munafiqeen in the past. Some of them, they would say that Arabs in Palestine or the Palestinian Arabs, they have their rights. They live in peace with what are known as Israelis, the Israeli Jews. They work with them. But these munafiqeen, some of these people who would sometimes go as tour guides to the land of Palestine, Muslims, they would inform the people that, look, these Palestinians, they live in peace with these Israeli occupiers. But in reality, what they didn't realize is that those were subjugated Arabs. Those are people who were occupied. They had no choice. Many of them have no choice except to live in order to survive. But it does not make that land, the land of Palestine, the land of those people who do not belong to it, to those colonizers, those who have colonized the entire land of Palestine. And this is why the so-called two-state solution is a false, a false dichotomy, a false way of fooling people into thinking that there will be a two-state solution, what state for the Palestinians the West Bank divided away from Gaza, that between Gaza and the West Bank, there are dozens of miles. You cannot reach the West Bank from Gaza except that you have to travel through the occupied part of Palestine, which they refer to as Israel, going through the checks of the Israeli, the European occupiers of that land, Western occupiers. So for anyone to claim, for any Muslim cleric to say that there is a this two-state solution, of course, politicians can say that. People like Erdogan and others, they have been saying two-state solution. They can get away by saying that as a political solution. But Muslim ulama cannot say that there is a two-state solution. There is only one state solution in the land of Palestine. And that is that the settler occupiers must 
stop their occupation, which is not just an occupation by a Zionist Jewish entity, it's an entire occupation by the United States of America and her allies. So this claim of two-state solution that people, uh, they must travel between Gaza and West Bank to get from, from Gaza to West Bank, they must travel through occupying forces that control their travel, or to have half the city of Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, when Jerusalem is an Arab city, Arab Islamic city. Jerusalem belongs to the entire Ummah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he informed us when he said to Abdullah bin Hawala radiyallahu an sahabi that the Khilafah shall descend in Al-Quds Sharif so the future Caliphate will be established in Al-Quds Sharif that is what Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised us and we know that will happen in accordance with the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we do not believe in a two state solution people must take that carrot dangling out of their minds that is not a solution the solution is a one state solution a one united palestine as the entire Al-Quds Sharif as its capital, with all the faiths of the world living under one Palestine, not uh, a racist state that we have, the occupation that we have at the moment, a state that is only made for the Jewish people. No, the 1400 years of Caliphate for the majority of the time, when the Muslims ruled Palestine, it was under Islamic law, but all the faiths of the world lived in Palestine. So the struggle of Palestine that we observe, the struggle with we've had from the time of the late 1800s when the Rothschild banking family purchased land within Palestine, which was under the Ottoman Caliphate at the time, and then settler colonial expansionism in the early 1900s and then when the British mandate occurred post 1917 there was clear collusion between Zionism and the British colonizers at the time in fact even Zionists and British intelligence worked together within the Holy Land within occupied Palestine from that time and then when post World War II the British mandate finished, the UN, it gives majority of Palestine away to foreigners which are Jewish Zionists who have been colonizing the land since 1948, the majority of Palestine. And then this issue exacerbates after the war in, the war in 1967 and then the 1973 war and of course what occurs after that is that we have the Intifada in 1987 and then the Oslo Accords in 1993 and then the second Intifada in the year 2000 and then Gaza is freed. Gaza is emancipated to a degree. It's freed to a degree in the sense what I mean by Gaza being free is that the occupying forces leave Gaza they had been occupying since 1967 and then they leave Gaza post 2005 or 6 and then what occurs is a blockade around Gaza Gaza is made into a concentration camp and nothing is permitted to enter into Gaza and then what happens on 2023 October the 7th is the events of October the 7th and you have the Israeli propaganda being propelled, false propaganda, with regard to the resistance that they had killed children, which was false. There was no killing of any 40 or 50 babies. That was false news. False news on rapes. False news that rape had occurred at the hands of resistance groups. That was false news. So for one year now, 
Gaza has been under bombardment. And we had Hezbollah in the north, the Lebanese front, taking its positions in the north of Palestine, in the north of occupied Palestine. And when they take their positions in the north of Palestine, they fire rockets in solidarity with Ahlu Gaza, with the people of Palestine, the group known as Hezbollah. And then an escalation occurs in Lebanon. And then what occurs in Lebanon is, of course, that in Lebanon, resistance fighters are killed, some of them uh, maimed, and some of them are killed through uh, remote detonation. And we know regarding these events. And now after the killing of top commanders of Hezbollah and the leadership, Israel, what is known as Israel, or the entity, has broadened its, its offensive in, Palestine, in Palestine. And today, on the 1st of October, today throughout the day, what happens is that the Israeli occupying forces, they enter places like Nablus. They kill and maim people in Nablus. They bomb people in Gaza. Children are left orphaned, which is a daily occurrence, something that occurs on a daily basis. The attempt to genocide, something which I mentioned at the inception of the current war, the attempt to genocide. And then uh, a few hours ago, Iran carries out its right of self-determination and self-defense by launching rockets in, into occupied Palestine. These are the latest events that have occurred. But what we observe is the reaction from the United States, that the United States of America now asserts the right of Israel to defend itself and asserts that the United States will stand with Israel and not only stand with Israel, they will arm and they fund Israel. So the current war is not a war with what is known as Israel or the entity alone. The current war, in fact, is a war that has been launched by the United States of America against the Middle East or peoples of the Middle East, which includes Palestinians, it includes Lebanese, it includes the Syrians, it includes the surrounding areas like Al-Iraq and Al-Iran. It includes the Ahlul Yemen, the people of Yemen. It's a war against the entire Middle East. And it's an occupation. So it's not only an occupation. We, we observe the behavior of Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, in previous times, people would give citation to forgeries like the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. People do not may, need to make reference to such books. You just need to listen to the speeches of Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet. A war cabinet that the, the rhetoric found in those speeches is similar to the rhetoric of Hitler and the Zionist regime that ruled Germany in the 1930s and the early 1940s. There is no difference between the current Israeli regime, the Knesset, and the Nazis. If these people were able to round up the Palestinians in concentration camps and eliminate them in huge numbers, they would do so. So the resistance that we observe in Lebanon is a national resistance. It's a national resistance of Arabs in Lebanon, whether they belong to the Christian faith or whether they belong to the Islamic faith. It's a national resistance against a foreign occupation. Similarly, in Palestine, the Palestinians, it's a national resistance of a people against a foreign occupation. And similarly, in Yemen, 
even though there are foreign fingers found in what occurs in Yemen, groups like Al-Qaeda that, that in Yemen are funded by the likes of the UAE in order to undermine anti-Israeli ulama, ulama who stand up against Israel. They are undermined by groups like Al-Qaeda. Similarly, Al-Qaeda in Idlib. Al-Qaeda, which currently occupies Idlib in Syria, is there to undermine any resistance to the occupation of Palestine. That occupation that is led currently by the likes of Benjamin Netanyahu. So, the current occupation of Benjamin Netanyahu not only threatens Lebanon, not only threatens Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank and within pa occupied Palestine, it threatens the entire region. Arab dictators today that support the occupiers, that support Israel, must realize that as Israel attempts to expand and annex Gaza and the West Bank into what is known as Greater Israel, to annex southern Lebanon as they intend to land grab. And if you read certain reports of Benjamin Netanyahu during the, the reign of Donald Trump, Benjamin Netanyahu very unequivocally states, we need more land. You can search this. He states that our need for land must be understood. Expansionism, Israeli expansionism, or the entity's desire to expand within the Middle East includes Syrian territory, includes Lebanese territory, and includes even Northern Arabia and Jordan. The, the intent to expand into Egypt, that is the long-term expansionist goals of the Zionist entity. And it's beyond any conspiracy theory. Many years ago, if you stated such things, people would deem you as a conspiracy theorist, but this is actual fact. When you read biographical autobiographical data uh, within uh, Zionist uh, intellectuals, meaning you read their academ academic works, you will find the desire within elements of Zionism. And these are strong in intellectual and strong influential elements within Zionism that intend to expand the Zionist state or the Zionist occupation well beyond its current borders. They deem Adafatul Gharbiya, the West Bank, as a part of the biblical Israel, which includes the entire Jerusalem and it includes the West Bank. Israel has very clearly demonstrated that it controls the foreign policy of the United States of America. So all Americans need to realize, we have many American listen, uh, listeners, that Israel controls your foreign policy and America, the United States of America controls our British foreign policy. Our foreign policy, especially after World War II, is very clearly under the foreign policy of the United States of America. But the United States of America, its current foreign policy, as we speak today, Joe Biden has demonstrated that he actually follows the dictates of Benjamin Netanyahu. It is Benjamin Netanyahu who attends the United State, United Nations within New York City, New York State, the United Nations building, and asserts Israeli foreign policy. The ICC and the ICJ, their judgments are symbolic, but they have no real effectiveness in terms of arresting the war criminal Benjamin Netanyahu. That is what we observe. Benjamin Netanyahu and the Israeli lobby and APAC and others, bankers, influential groups and individuals within the United States of America, they control the foreign policy of the United States of America. It's not only within the music industry within the United States or within Hollywood that Zionist Jews may have considerable influence within those industries, it is also within the foreign policy of the United States of America. That is why 
currently as we speak we have american american military equipment and personnel supporting the zionist occupation of lebanon and uh, palestine in gaza you have military equipment and personnel from germany from the united kingdom from even france even though macron may condemn actions of netanyahu there is actual french support for the foreign occupation so this is palestine is not only fighting benjamin netanyahu palestine is fighting the the wealthiest nations of the world today palestine and gaza more specifically are defying the, the most powerful militaries of the world today. That is what is going on. Lebanon has taken a stance against the most powerful militaries and the mightiest nations on earth today. And similarly, the strike by Iran today is defiance. Iran is defying a foreign occupation of Palestine. That is what we are observing and these nations Iran, Palestine, Asham, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, they have every right to defend their autonomy and remember these are nations recognized by international law people may disagree with the government of those countries you may disagree with groups within those countries but as nation states according to international law they are actual recognized states and they have every right to defend their autonomy so what we observe today from one year we are approaching one year since the occupation uh, started its uh, continuous warfare within Gaza what we are observing now is an escalation and that escalation people cannot blame Amer the United States of America why they must blame Israel they must blame Benjamin Netanyahu because Benjamin Netanyahu has more leverage on foreign policy than Joe Biden that is the reality that we observe that Joe Biden does not have as much influence on the foreign policy of the United States of America as Benjamin Netanyahu has on the foreign policy of the United States of America and by extension the foreign policy of the United Kingdom, Germany and, and the allies of the United States of America. That is in terms of Western allies. But then we have the treachery of Arab rulers and other rulers. For instance, Abdul Fattah Sisi, the ruler of Egypt. Egypt is one of the most indebted nations in the world. Egypt uh, is indebted to the IMF and the military is corrupt to the point that people that are taking aid through the Rafah crossing into Gaza to feed hungry orphans and widows and needy people, men and women and children, they need to give bribes to the Egyptian officers. Imagine that, taking aid through the Rafah crossing in Egypt and Gaza and having the need to pay bribery to the soldiers that is the state of the egyptian military and then we have the treachery of the king of jordan that the king of jordan does not open the borders now recently i did mention something where i stated that only two policies need to be carried out by the muslim ummah and we will have victory within palestine very soon the first policy was cutting off trade with the entity which is known as the State of Israel and the second was with regard to opening up the borders that if Egypt and Jordan and Lebanon well Lebanon does not fall into that category because Lebanon is a nation of resistance but if Egypt and Jordan and surrounding nations and Tayyip Erdogan open the borders of Turkey rather than just making speeches in the United Nations which he has become very notorious for making speeches rhetorical speeches that if these nations open the borders the, the Muslims would have victory very soon 
as well as cutting off trade with what is known as the entity and the, the United Arab Emirates, the, the UAE is the number one culprit in terms of escalating trade ties with the Zionist entity. There are tradesmen, people who there are people who have good ties with Israeli businessmen. Here also in the United Kingdom, Muslims who trade with Israeli businessmen. Why? Because the Israelis are very enthusiastic to trade with Muslims because it hastens for them the recognition and normalization, they utilize this word normalization, of the recognition of what is known as the State of Israel. This is something Muslims must avoid. Trade with the Israeli entity, trade with Zionists, cut off all trade. Tayyip Erdogan, he utilized rhetoric stating that Turkey will finish all trade with the Israeli entity, which it has not to this day. Is, uh, Turks are still trading with the Israeli entity despite the attempt to genocide in Gaza, despite what is happening in Lebanon. Even though a few months ago Tayyip Erdogan was on record to state that if an invasion of Lebanon occurs, then that is a red line. How many red lines he has stated in the past are many. That has occurred now. The Israelis have made incursions into southern Lebanon and have continuously bombed uh, civilian areas, violated human rights, uh, violated uh, international law. They have passed your red line. Even Joe Biden had a red line. If you remember, he said Rafa is a red line previously. Well, they have already bypassed that red line. They have gone past that red line. And uh, as I said, Joe Biden follows the foreign policy of Israel, the Knesset. The, the Knesset and Israel, and whoever is behind Israel is behind the United States foreign policy. So Erdogan, who is a member of the United Nations, must realize that secular Turkey has placed troops in the past in Iraq, in Afghanistan, during the occupation of Afghanistan. Uh, Turkish troops were in Afghanistan, and the Taliban warned them to leave and similarly, Turkish troops are in Iraq. Turkish troops are in Syria, killing Kurds and Syrians. And Syrians on the border of Turkey and on the border of Syria. Sim similarly, Turkish troops are in Libya. So you find Turkish troops in foreign countries, you find them everywhere. But you do not find them in Palestine. What prevents Erdogan from sending a peacekeeping force within the West Bank. That's a message for President Tayyip Erdogan. What prevents you, O oh President Tayyip Erdogan, from sending a peacekeeping force of only 500 troops into West, the West Bank, not even Gaza? You cannot even send a peacekeeping force which is permiss permissible by international law. According to international law, if Turkey dispatches 500 troops into the West Bank, that would be something permitted by international law. It's not aggression. It's not an act of aggression towards Israel. You cannot even do such a simple act. So why are you talking strong with regard to taking military action against Israel when you have not done anything of the sort? That is with regard to Tayyip Erdogan. Because many people were mentioning the the rhetoric of Iran and the rhetoric of Hezbollah and people were saying Hezbollah is not honest in its motives for the Palestinian people even though they do not mention that uh, Sayyid Nasrullah who has passed away now when uh, Hamas carried out its attacks on October the 7th he made it very clear that he was unaware of Hamas's motives to do this and was unaware of their plan. But yet, Hezbollah kept the northern border or the southern border of Lebanon and the northern border of the entity of occupied Palestine busy. They kept the Zionists busy 
with rockets. They kept them occupied, and, and they many of the illegal settlers. In fact, all of the all of what is known as Israel is illegal. But what is known as northern Israel, those occupiers, they moved down south. They kept them busy. So while this was happening, Erdogan utilized rhetoric. So to this day, Erdogan has been utilizing rhetoric that he has many speeches within the United Nations. But all he needs to do is send a peacekeeping force into the West Bank. Send a peacekeeping force into Lebanon. O oh, Tayyib Erdogan, President Tayyib Erdogan, you have sent peacekeeping forces in Libya. You have sent peacekeeping forces in Afghanistan. You have sent peacekeeping forces in Iraq. Throughout the world, in various places, under the NATO, why do you not send peacekeeping forces into Lebanon and into the West Bank and into Gaza in the occupied territories, in all these regions. That's a very simple step for Turkey to carry out, politically speaking, instead of utilizing high rhetoric and speech. So that is with regard to uh, Tayyip Erdogan. We know very well that the Pakistani military will not intervene. The Pakistani army has showed its colors in the past few years. Its cards are dealt. Uh, it is not concerned at all with regard to what is occurring in the Middle East, because mainly because uh, they do have a nationalistic outlook in terms of if the Arabs are not doing anything, then why should we? As well as the endemic of corruption within the Pakistani military and the fact that now the Pakistani military has become a dictatorship like the Mid Middle Eastern nations. The approach towards political opposition within Pakistan, the methodology has become the methodology of Arab dictators, which is uh, ta'adib, which is punishing dissent by imprisoning and torturing, which is very unfortunate in all the Muslim countries or the majority of the Muslim countries that carry out torture and imprisonment uh, for political dissidents. That's in all the Muslim countries. That is a wrong policy to torture anyone and to, uh, to beat people and imprison them on a false pretense. Even though Pakistan should realize that India <clears throat> is an ally of what is known as Israel. But there are certain munafiqeen in Pakistani society. Of course, there was not only Salman Ta'seer. You have the likes of Mubashir Luqman. Now, Mubashir Luqman is an anchor on Pakistani TV. This Mubashir Luqman, he had, he had rhetoric against Imran Khan, which I heard, but this individual, Mubashir Luqman, a news anchor and journalist, he appeared on Israeli te uh, television a few years ago. And when he appeared on Is Israeli television, firstly, a Pakistani should not be appearing on Israeli television because the Pakistani passport rightly has that this country does not recognize the state of Israel. A Pakistani cannot ent enter cannot enter Palestine with a Pakistani passport. So this Mubashir Luqman, a munafiq, he goes on to Israeli t television and he mentions that the reason for the imprisonment of Imran Khan was that Imran Khan was instructed by the elite to recognize the state of Israel which he refused to do so. That's the statement of Mubashir Luqman. Whether false or true, it's for people who have a deep knowledge of Pakistan and Pakistani politics to know. But the point is that this Mubashir Luqman is roaming free in Pakistan. He even did uh, interviews with uh, high level political figures and clerics, which is so unfortunate because this person was on Israeli television, Israeli television and stating on Israeli television that the Pakistani elite would want to recognize the state of Israel. But remember, the only reason the state of Pakistan does not recognize the state of Israel officially is 
for two reasons. One is that the army awaits for Saudi Arabia and other countries to lead the way. And the second reason is that the people of Pakistan are very strongly against the state of Israel. The vast majority of Pakistanis are against Zionism. And then, of course, uh, the reason why uh, the Taliban cannot intervene is because the Taliban do not have a safe passage. And this would mean that Afghanistan and Iran need better ties. They both share cultural links in terms of Persian roots and Persian language. But uh, Afghanistan and Iran need to make better ties so that there is a safe route between Afghanistan and Iran to Iraq, to Syria, and then to Lebanon. So, of course, what, is the Israeli occupying forces have announced that they, they will be responding to Iran's incursion uh, or a bombing of uh, occupied Palestine. Now, uh, someone states only the Shia of Pakistan stand for Palestine. That is not true. The Sunnis of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah in Pakistan, all the groups, stand against the state of Israel, the, the political groups. Remember, the Shia in Pakistan is not one strand, it's not one spectrum. You have secular Shia, you have Shia in the People's Party, you have Shia in the Muslim League, you have Sunnis who stand against. Israel in Pakistan. Tahrik Labbaik is one example. But there are many others. Jamaat Islami is another example. There are other groups that stand against the illegal entity known as Israel. Inshallah Ta'ala will take some of your questions and then we will uh, continue uh, with some commentary on what is occurring for the now. Please post your questions within the chat. So Someone asks the question, the Muslim Ummah has millions of soldiers. We could walk through Israel if the Ummah was united. But leaders pray towards uh, diplomatic and foreign interests. The willingness needs to be there. So the willingness for unity and the willingness for action. That is the, the solution, a willingness. And the Hadith mentions why the Ummah in the Akhir zaman in the end of times, will not have that willingness. The response to that is, the Hadith states, حُبُّ dunya wa karahiyatul maut, Love of the world and dislike of death. Go uh, to some of these Khalij, Middle Eastern countries, oil states. You will find the, the youth, the Khalij youth, oil states, they do not boycott McDonald's in the, in the Khalij in countries like the UAE. They do not uh, boycott any of these things. The minimum a Muslim can do is boycott. But so, so many of them, they do not even boycott the corporations that support and fund Israeli occupation or fund Zionism. So the leadership is unwilling and many of the masses are unwilling. Someone asks the question, what's your take on Iran's empty threats and their half-hearted missiles? Well, the thing is that uh, the missiles that uh, landed today were not half-hearted. 
unless you believe Israeli media and propaganda. And remember, Iran in the region has formed militias. Those militias, like the Houthis in Yemen, Ansarullah in Yemen, and Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Hamas in Gaza, have been quite effective more than those other governments within the Middle East, the Khalid states, for instance, or the surrounding countries. So rather than being critical of Iran, we need to incite action within the other nations that have not uh, taken any action whatsoever against the current occupation and the attempt to genocide. Uh, someone asks the question, many Arab-speaking scholars on end times have said we are not in a duhayma, yet we are in the period before that. This is contrary to what I thought, Sheikh. Please explain. Well, uh, if you read, you mention Arab ulama, if you read uh, Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Adani's book, Al-Uthas wal-Muntaliqat, which is one of the best books on the Akhir zaman written in the modern times, written by a Yemeni sheikh, Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Adani from Ahlul Bayt. Uh, he has passed away, but the book is available, Al-Usas wal-Muntaliqat. He will answer your question if you refer to that. Someone asks, are Shias not better than that they stand with Palestine, yet the whole Sunni Middle East states are quiet? Also, what is Morocco doing? The answer is, this is not an issue of Sunni and Shia. This is an issue of the entire Ummah. So the, the Sunnis need to take more action. But remember, the resistance groups, there are many of them that are Sunni from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah within Palestine. They work, they collude with the Shia. So it's an issue that goes beyond, it transcends Sunni, Shia, Wahhabi. This is an issue of, that includes everyone. It even transcends, occupation transcends race, ethnicity, and it transcends even religion. In the sense that the Christians of the Middle East also help in removing the yoke of this occupation. Someone asks, as individuals, what shall we do? Uh, raise awareness in, on every platform. Raise awareness, knowledge, with regard to the occupation. Raising awareness is the greatest thing you can do. Continue the boycotts. Continue political action. Continue all types of political action. Someone asks, do protests help? The answer is yes, protests do help. What would Afghanistan need in order to cross borders? And can you touch on Khurasan? So for Afghanistan to be active, Afghanistan needs an open border from Iran, safe passage from Iran. If Iran today made a, a deal with the government, the current government of Afghanistan, they need, Afghanistan would need a safe passage because those are Rijal in Khurasan. They are not sold out like the Pakistani army or the Turkish army or like the Khalij, the oil states, the Arab oil states. There are men in Khurasan. And if Iran made a pact with the Afghanistan government to open up the border of Iran to allow resistance groups to enter Iran and from Iran be transported to Lebanon. Those men are not men who have been raised on McDonald's and Adidas and Nike. They are not men who have been raised on television and Hollywood. 
They are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared, the men of Khurasan. And the men of Khurasan shall take an active role in the Akhru Zaman. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in a hadith that the black banners shall come from Khurasan, which is Afghanistan and Iran, the southern western point of Afghanistan and the northern eastern point of Iran. So that border needs to be opened. And the men of Khurasan need to be transported to the battle sites of Lebanon and to the battle sites of Gaza and the battle sites of occupied Palestine. Someone asks which countries did send peacekeeping forces to the West Bank and similar areas. The answer is none. And that is where peacekeeping forces are needed. Someone asks, with regard to what can we do for Palestine, there's much you can do. For instance, recently, when I went to al Madina al munawwarah we had a mawlid in al Madina al munawwarah The organizers of that mawlid wanted to have drinks. So many of the shops in al Madina al munawwarah they still serve Coca-Cola. So they wanted to serve cases of Coca-Cola. Instead of serving the Coca-Cola, I adv advise them purchase the local cola, which is the Saudi cola, and serve the Saudi cola instead of the Coca-Cola. Now that one act, you may deem it as being small, but these acts have a long-term implication and effectiveness. That if all of us participated in these, what we deem as small acts, in the long term, those acts will be very effective. So there is much we can do. Raising awareness. Even, do not even underestimate writing letters. Letter writing to people in power, people of influence. Never under underestimate those things. Someone asks the question, what is Iran's incentive? They are not going into a full-scale war. They are avoiding a war, yet claim to help and defend Palestine, etc. Please expand on this. Why should Iran stand alone? That's the question. Why should Iran face the consequences alone in terms of nation states that they could potentially face invasion like Saddam Hussein? Now remember Saddam Hussein when he stood up against the West for whatever motivations he had after the invasion of Kuwait. His country faced sanctions. Now Iraq, Iran has fought off those sanctions by being very self-sufficient. Iran has maintained its posture in the Middle East and it has many enemies within the Khalid states. Khalid states that would fund groups to destabilize Iran and other countries in that region. So Iran's support well, Palestine would be limited in the sense that no one goes into full-scale war uh, except knowing that they have a better chance of winning than losing. In the current climate, if Iran goes into full-scale war with Israel, it would face the United States of America, it would face the United Kingdom, it would face France, it would face Germany. And all the allies of the United States, which include the Arab states like Jordan, Jordan was intercepting Iranian missiles. It would face border problems with countries next to it. The Pakistani army is unpredictable. If you remember a few months ago, the incident, the border skirmish between Pakistan and Iran. Pakistan could very easily align itself with the West against Iran. That can occur at any moment. And it's nothing to do with Shia Sunni. Remember that. Because Pakistan has many Shia contingents. 
There are many Shia in the Pakistani army. It's nothing to do with Shia Sunni. It's to do with regional occupation. It's, it's about the United States enforcing its lifestyle within the region of opening corporations, of having all the, the trade deals that benefit the West. It's about uh, uh, cultural occupation. It's about land grabbing within Palestine. It's about expansion and creating what they refer to as a greater Israel, which the current Arab rulers do not realize. That in the long term, the Israelis, like Benjamin Netanyahu, our MIT graduate, would want to expand to the point that they take Northern Arabia, they take Jordan, the Jordan Valley, they take parts of Syria, perhaps even Damascus. This is their long-term intended goal. They will never achieve this because the current resistance and uh, fighting of the occupation will defeat them eventually, insha'Allah ta'ala. There will be victory. But in the long term, Israeli expansionism, and remember Israel controls America. It's not, the United States currently does not control Israel. Israel controls the United States, and the, the past one year has demonstrated that very clearly. So Iran has its, its objective in protecting its interests, but the nations surrounding Iran, like Pakistan and the, the oil states, the Gulf states, as well as Turkey, all of these could potentially turn coat on Iran and they are all allies. Remember Turkey was an ally of Israel or recognized Israel from its inception. Of course it's a secular Turkey. It's the Turkey of Ataturk. It's not the Turkey of a Sultan Abdul Hamid Rahimallah. Similarly the Arab nations and their posturing and aligning themselves with the current occupation. As uh, someone says, the Iranian ambassador met with Pakistani air chief a few days before the missile attack. That may be the case, but Pakistan is very unpredictable. Remember, General Pervez Musharraf gave basis to the American occupation of Afghanistan. And diplomats like Abdul Salam Zaif, the diplomat for Afghanistan, were taken by the ISI, arrested by the ISI, and handed over to the United States of America to be placed in Guantanamo Bay. That is the policy that the ISI has played out throughout its years. There is clear collusion between the ISI and the CIA. So Pakistan as a country is very unpredictable. Someone states, you are wrong about Pak Army. They are just defending us from India. Why are you angry with Pakistan and Army? The answer is, I am not angry with Pak Army. Remember, you say that the Pak Army is protecting you from India. The Pak Army has maintained a narrative of war with India to maintain the relevancy of the Pak Army. So Kashmir has been occupied for over 70 years. <coughs> Kashmiri civilians have for the most part been defending themselves. There are no actually Kashmiri militants armed and funded properly by Pakistan. If that were the case, why in Azad Kashmir the country of my origin, why does not the Pakistani army arm and train the Azad Kashmiris? The Azad Kashmiris are not trained and funded. So the way Iran and other countries are funding and maintaining armed militancy within Palestine, Pakistan has not done that in Azad Kashmir and has not done that in occupied Kashmir in the other side of Kashmir in the valley and elsewhere yes in the 90s and in the 80s they they had a few groups like Lashkar-e-Taiba and these groups that were funded 
but they were closed down post Pervez Musharraf. Pervez Musharraf had all these groups closed down. They were funded to an extent and they were trained to an extent, a limited extent, only to destabilize some aspects of the Indian military. But remember Kargil, it was Nawaz Sharif who retreated from Kargil on the behest of Bill Clinton. And if you do research on the Pakistani military, its cap cap nuclear capabilities, you will see that Pakistan's and India's nuclear capabilities was facilitated by the United States of America. The, the nuclear capability of Pakistan and India were facilitated by the United States of America. So the, the military has shown its face, in, especially in recent years. And the main thing we would want to note is that Pakistan military will not participate in emancipation of Palestine because they do not see it as a national struggle. They only recognize national struggle within their own borders. Pakistan never helped the Rohingyans. Pakistan never intervened in any, interve never carried out any intervention for protection of Muslims within its surrounding borders. In fact, the Pakistani army under Brigadier Zia in 1970 carried, became a servant army of the Jordanian royal family to kill Palestinians. Under Brigadier Zia, the Brigadier at the time, he was not General Zia, he killed a few thousand Palestinian Arabs on the behest of the Jordanian uh, uh, royal family. So it was an army for hire at times. It can become an uh, army for hire. Why was the Afghan war different? The Afghan war was different because the, it had the full support of the CIA. So from 79 to 89, the United States supported Afghan militancy in Afghanistan and Pakistan fell behind the Afghans because it was supported by Saudi Arabia and the United States of America. If the United States of America and Saudi Arabia do not sanction Pakistan to intervene, Pakistan will never intervene. That is the grand reality. Now, I am sorry to those people who have been raised and brainwashed by Pakistani military propaganda, but that is the reality. I am no fan of India, I do not like India. I despise the Indian government. Uh, when I say India, I mean the Indian government. I, I despise Modi, I despise the Indian army. The Indian army is an army that has occupied Kashmir and carried out human rights violations in Kashmir. But the Pakistani army has purposefully kept a forestalling of any real military action. And when it has, it followed the uh, on the behest of Bill Clinton at the time, Nawaz Sharif, he retreated from the hills of Kargil. Someone say, uh, states, you, you are just against Pakistan. Your arguments don't hold any ground. That is not true. Uh, I am not against Pakistan. I am saying that the Pak Pakistani military uh, the higher echelons, the upper echelons of the Pakistani military are very corrupt. And someone states, Pakistan were shelling their own protesters with rangers for voicing out for Palestine. Another thing I would like to mention with regard to Pakistan, there is a secular elite within Pakistan that would want no Islam in Pakistan. These secular people, they end up discussing on forums, on army forums sometimes. They despise Islam, they despise the ulama. They would want no Islam in the whole of Pakistan. Those people must be questioned, if you wanted Pakistan to be secular from the onset, from its inception, then why even call for a Pakistan? What, the very meaning of Pakistan, the basis of it was Islam, greater Pakistan. The concept of Pakistan was Greater Pakistan, which includes Delhi and it includes Bangladesh. So from current Pakistan through Delhi all the way to Bangladesh, a nation that must be ruled by the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet that has not occurred. 
and the secular elite within Pakistan would want to undermine that. There are some people who say Iran is controlled occupation, uh, controlled opposition. I do not buy into such conspiracy theories that it is uh, uh, controlled opposition. I would deem that as being a conspiracy theory. Someone states, what is Lebanon's military capability? Is this an all that war? What are your thoughts on this escalating and turning into full-scale World War III, including Russia, China, and India, and so on. Well, India has already involved itself India has already involved itself by giving shells to supplying Israel with shells and uh, from it's very difficult to predict the future and a person should never attempt to actually predict the future but there is conflagration there is escalation occurring as we speak if i were to base my prescient uh, opinions or foresight upon the personality of bb who is BB? BB's general uh, is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Then I would say th this will escalate. You have to remember, BB is an Armageddon-believing, uh, messianic cultist. He had a, a rabbi who, this rabbi was from New York City. And when BB would go visit him in the 1980s and the 1990s, this rabbi had foretold that Bibi would lead the way for the Messiah to appear. So Bibi is a messianic cultist. You have a maniac, a messianic cultist uh, ruling the Knesset and ruling what is known as Israeli politics. That is the reality. That is the type of thing that the Times of Israel and the Jewish Chronicles would never mention that these are messianic maniacs. They may refer to Iran as such because Iran has the belief in Al-Mahdi, which is also a Sunni belief. They may refer to Sunnis as being messianic, like Hamas and others. But in reality, Benjamin Netanyahu is a messianic maniac. And if we are to look at the psychopaths, uh, the steps he has taken, if we were basing our future predictions on the behavior of Benjamin Netanyahu, we would say that there is a conflagration, there is an escalation happening. That means a ground invasion. And what do we have to say regarding the Lebanese capabilities? Hezbollah in 2006 killed over 150 Israeli soldiers, which was deemed, at that time, it was deemed as a huge number. Of course, we know now that thousands of Israeli soldiers have been maimed or killed in the occupation of Gaza in the past one year. How long can Israel, the entity, sustain this war? And of course, uh, the, uh, the Federal Reserve and the Bank of America, whatever, funds Israel 7 billion package more recently, how long can the Federal Reserve actually sustain an economic war? How long can Israel sustain uh, this war which is damaging its international reputation? Personally, I do not think the Knesset or Benjamin Netanyahu care for what the world thinks. But how long can they sustain this? And how long can they sustain military warfare loss of soldiers and loss of uh, the health of their military personnel within uh, Lebanon, which are increasing war fronts. And as another question that needs to be asked is, will they target Bashar al-Assad? That now that they have successfully killed Hassan Nasrullah and the top leadership of Hezbollah, they have attempted, they killed 
Ismail Haniya. They have attempted to kill Yahya Sinwar, which they have been unable to do so. But will they be targeting Bashar al-Assad? And how is the security of Bashar al-Assad? Uh, after they target Bashar al-Assad, unpredictable. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is unpredictable. Will he even target the Khamenei in Iran? Will he at target the leadership of Iran, the political leadership and the religious uh, spiritual leadership of Iran? These things will, will give conflagration to uh, various militias within Iraq, within Iran, militias within Syria. It will lead to an escalation within the region. So what are the Lebanese capabilities? I mentioned that 150 or so Israeli soldiers died in 2006 at the hands of uh, Hezbollah. Has Hezbollah from 18 years ago upgraded its military capabilities on war, uh, ground warfare? That will be witnessed in the coming days and weeks when the IDF has engagement with, with Hezbollah, when it engages with Hezbollah militants, we will see a demonstration of the capabilities of Hezbollah militants with the cowardly IDF, cowardly force. That will be witnessed in the coming days. But of course, an upgrade of capabilities has occurred for Hezbollah in the past 18 days. We could observe that Hezbollah even allows the IDF to enter Lebanese territory until they pass into the depth of Lebanon, awaiting for their graveyard. That could easily happen. The IDF believe that they have success in entering Lebanon and when they enter Lebanon, they enter the depths of Lebanon, they could be facing their graveyard. That is a very potential uh, reality. So, with regard to the, the current situation, keep all eyes on the Satan, which is Benjamin Netanyahu. He's a messianic, the Jalik messianic, apocalyptic believing individual. He believes that he is creating a greater Israel, which includes South Lebanon, the annexation of the Gaza and the West Bank, the mass exodus, en masse exodus of all Palestinians from the Holy Lands, that is, that is the end goal. Do not think that the end goal of the Knesset and these Talmud reading, Talmud reading Zionists, is not to have everything from the River Nile all the way to the River Euphrates, to have all that everything in between them. That is the end goal. So I do believe there will be an escalation, but what should the Muslims do? Continue making awareness. Continue making awareness in all circles. Continue the boycotts. Continue political action. And, and continue pressurizing political leaders, as I mentioned, Tayyip Erdogan and others, to take action, military action, against the current occupation. Uh, someone asks, shall we not conduct awareness programs in mosques across UK and going into different sects mosques like Wahhabis, the Obandis, etc.? Uh, the answer is that everyone on their own platform should be making awareness. Everyone on their own platform should be making awareness. We as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah are making awareness on our platforms. And of course, on my platform, you have people from all the various sects and non-Muslims listening. Muslims and non-Muslims. So people continue making uh, awareness. Someone asks the question, the latest one, the people of Gaza has reached one whole year this October. What is your message to our brothers and sisters in Gaza and our children of Gaza? My message to the people of Gaza is that you are the crown of our, 
the honor of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when I went to Mecca al mukarrama uh, al madina al munawwara recently, instead of making dua for personal needs and material needs, my main dua was for Ahlu Gaza specifically and for the people of Palestine broadly speaking. So the people of Palestine, all of Palestine, you are the crowns of our heads. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he bring hasten in a victory very soon. And your foresight is more deep than our foresight. Your deen is stronger than our deen. Your iman is stronger than our iman. You are the people of jihad. You are Ahlul Jihad. You are the people at the forefront of the Ummah, of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Someone states, Uh, would T- uh, Pakistan intervene if TLP came into power? The answer is yes, it would. Someone asks, when will the Euphrates war happen? The answer is that the Euphrates war will happen when the Euphrates uncovers a mountain of gold. When it will happen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Will it happen in 2027? Allah knows best. It's ghayb. Ilm uh, al عند Allah. But when it happens, there will be a destructive war from where? From every 1,000 people, 999 will die. A destructive war. Someone asks the question, Assalamu alaikum. How do you think Israel will attempt to facilitate the destruction of Al Aqsa complex? Will they outright destroy it or use the idea of Temple Man to do it more in a more nefarious way? The answer is that we as Muslims should never permit them to do so. So the willingness, some people they give this nefarious uh, idea, some so called Muslim scholars. They say there's space for a temple. But this is the wrong thing. The entire complex is Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And uh, of course, they will attempt... What they do, the Zionist Jews and Zionist Christians who back them, and Zionist Muslims who back them, is that initially you give them an inch, then they will take a foot. Then they entrench themselves until they can have more. So there is not in any way in the Sharia of Allah they are permitted even an inch of the Aqsa complex. They are not permitted an inch. But remember one thing, that the blood of a child from Gaza is worth more than the entire Gaza, than the entire Al-Aqsa complex. The blood of a martyr in Gaza and Palestine and Lebanon is worth more than the entire Al-Aqsa complex. According to the hadith, that the blood of a Muslim, a mu'min, is more precious than the Kaaba itself. Someone asks the question, one year on and Bibi is showing no sign of slowing down. He seems militarily strong, militarily strong and walks the earth free even after ICC trial. He has anyone who helps Gaza in his sights. How far can he go to achieve his greater Israel? The answer is he will be stopped. There is only so much hubris a human can have until they are stopped in their tracks. Remember Ariel Sharon, and I send this message to the likes of Benjamin Netanyahu. Do not forget what happened to Ariel Sharon. Ariel Sharon had hubris and arrogance to the point he killed women and children. But what happened to Ariel Sharon? He went into a deep coma 
and then he was bedridden for years until he died a disgraceful death. That is what happened to Ariel Sharan. And Benjamin Netanyahu, with all your pride and arrogance, with all your nefarious behavior, with all your child killing, and all your hubris, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you suddenly when you not, do not expect it. That is what will happen. That the wrath of Allah will come down and punish you. Someone asks the question, will the Sufyani appear if Asad is killed? It's too early to say because uh, Asad may not be killed. But remember, at the moment, Benjamin Netanyahu is on an high and there could be possibility of him targeting other leaders that are antithetical to or ostensibly antithetical to Israel. And Bashar al-Assad is one of them. But what Syria supplies is, an, is a route for arms. Arms arriving from Iran, they enter Damascus, they go into Lebanon. And Israel would want to finish this. They would want to cut the supply uh, route. They, and they would utilize groups like Al-Qaeda. So Jawlani, who cur currently occupies Idlib, Wahhabi groups that currently occupy Idlib, these groups work alongside with Mossad. That's not a conspiracy theory. People like Jawlani, not sincere Sunnis who entered the Syrian revolution, not sincere Sunnis. I'm referring to Wahhabis like Jawlani and others. They would rather cooperate with Mossad in order to topple Assad. So they would work with the devil, meaning Benjamin Netanyahu. And that is why we've had people carrying banners in Hebrew thanking Benjamin Netanyahu. They would want to work with Benjamin Netanyahu, with Mossad, in order to get to their enemy, common enemy, which is Bashar al-Assad, who is also a dictator, a volume, no doubt. But the game that is being played is to stop that supply route. So the supply of arms into Lebanon is coming from Damascus. The Mossad would want to stop that. They would utilize groups like Al-Qaeda, like they utilize them in Yemen. Those groups are utilized. Misguided ideology. The ideology of Al-Qaeda and the ideology of Daesh, ISIS. Soldiers of whom were treated in Tel Aviv. When they had injured soldiers, they would be treated in Tel Aviv, in Israel. People who killed more Sunnis than they killed anyone else. They destroyed our Sunni shrines, declaring us as Quburiyun, grave worshippers, destroying historical sites, taking out, ex exhuming bodies from the graves, and then aligning themselves with the state of Israel. So do not allow, do not allow, the rhetoric of divide and conquer at this current stage. Do not allow it. United, all groups united against the common enemy. The common enemy here is the Knesset. The common enemy is Benjamin. The common enemy is the entity. All groups must unite against the common enemy. That is correct Islamic advice. So anyone at this stage who divides and disunites the Muslims against their common enemy is only falling into the hands of Mossad, into the hands of uh, the Mossad and their allies. Someone asks the question, how can we create a safe passage for Afghanistan without conflict arising? That would have to be done through a pact between the Iranian and Afghanistan government. Someone states, Pakistan flag is the black, powerful, dark green flag of Qabul Khurasan. The answer is that Pakistan is not actually situated within Khurasan. Khurasan does, Pakistan doesn't fall into that. 
and currently speaking Pakistan is not actually actively involved in fighting the, uh, the occupation. Someone asks, Sheikh, why Ahlul Sunnah scholars have different comments on Hassan Nasrullah's death? The reason is, and the Shia need to understand this, Shia people need to understand that as long as there is cursing within the Shia, cursing of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, cursing of Umar, cursing of Aisha, cursing of Sahaba, ridwan, the Sunni Muslims will always have distrust towards the Shia. And there is a long history between us Sunnis and the Shia. And because of this cursing, the Sunnis have very strong resentment and despise for the Shia. This is something Shia need to understand. Cursing Yazid is one thing. Even Sunnis curse Yazid. But when you equate Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq and Sayyiduna Umar and Sayyiduna, Sayyiduna Aisha radiallahu anha, you disunite us. That is a reality. So many Sunnis, when they see Shia resistance groups, they associate them with cursing of Sahaba Ali Muridwan. Then we have our history of what occurred in Iraq. Remember, Saddam Hussein persecuted some of the Shia in Iraq. So when the Shia had freedom from Saddam Hussein, many Shia groups persecuted Sunnis. And then you had what ISIS did with the Shia in Iraq also, where the ISIS Remember, they are Wahhabi. We distinguish between Wahhabis and Sunnis. But the Daesh, they carried out acts of oppression against Sunnis and Shia. And then we have this long history now, 12-year history of what has occurred in more than 12 years, 13-year history of what occurred in Syria and the role of Hezbollah in Iran in Syria, which I am not going into that, but I am telling you why there is this distrust among Sunnis for the Shia and that is across the board, across the spectrum the Asha'ira, the Maturidis, the Ahlul Athar, the Sufis, all these Ahl Sunnah groups they have distrust towards the Shia that is the unfortunate historical context so many people cannot objectively observe what Hassan Nasrullah was doing, what Hezbollah was doing, what Iran is doing, what the Houthis are doing, even though Houthis are different, they are Zaydis. The Zaydis and the Sufis in Yemen, they have a different relationship. But this is not across the board of all the Sunnis. There are Sunnis who understand the, the current political climate. There are those Sunnis who understand uh, the broader implications who understand the spectrum, who understand the depth of the current situation. Uh, for instance, there was Dr. Hamza Katani, Hafizullah in Morocco. Dr. Hamza Katani is a person who understands, the Katanis in general are people who understand politics very in depth. There are many other Sunni ulama who understand the in depth political reality. So there is much more to that, but today is not a sectarian analysis, it's a political analysis. So someone asks, Sheikh, realistically speaking, what do you think PAC, PAC Army and ISA could do? Fighter jets can't fly far. What Pakistan and ISA could do is contact Tayyib Erdogan, Pakistan military, Pakistan leadership, contact Tayyib Erdogan, make that connection. Say to Tayyib Erdogan, we as Pakistanis will give you 200 Pakistani soldiers. You bring 200 Turkish soldiers and we will simply place them in the West Bank as a peacekeeping force. You tell me if Pakistan and Turkey do this alliance of just sending 200 troops each, overnight the 
balance of power will change within Palestine. It has great implications. If Pakistan leadership could do that, it's not a hostile act. It's a very easy act. You can explain it away to your paymasters in Washington, D.C. So if Pakistani civilian and military uh, leaders are scared of their leadership in Washington, they could very easily explain that these are peacekeeping troops, 200 troops. It, all it takes is one phone call, but there is no willingness. So that is what I would convey to Pakistani leadership. Someone asks, Sheikh, I had another question. There is an idea amongst Jews that their kingdoms only last for 80 years. Known as the Eighth Decade Curse. Have any of the ulama written about this? Uh, the spokesman of Hamas, Abu Ubaidah, mentioned this. That this is mentioned in the Torah. That the curse of the Eighth Decade. And the Eighth Decade has occurred. They are in the eighth decade as we speak. Someone asks the most relevant advice for UK Muslims in this time. Any changes in our approach? The answer is yes. That for instance, there are people who would say what we say is delusional. It's a fantasy. But I would say it's not delusional and it's not a fantasy. These are real life situations. The smallest of acts can change things. The smallest of act can change things. And one act, for instance, someone contacted me recently and they are on the Rafa border, bringing in trucks filled with thousands of tons of rice, saying that rice will feed hundreds and thousands of people of Gaza throughout winter. That is an act by one individual. That is an act you can do. There are people who listen to me who own millions, if not billions. I'm addressing you that there are acts, great acts you can do. Feed thousands of families. Home them, give them homes, give them refuge. And that alone is a great act of emancipation for the cause of Palestine. Every individual can do great things. One question is, so one year on and the resistance are still strong and entrenched within Gaza. The idea failed to oust them and their tunnels, they claim to kill Daif and Sinwar, but both are still alive. But both are still alive. Gaza, Gaza is stronger. Yes, that is true. People will say that 41,000 people have died. Of course, they have died. Uh, the Pakistanis who have been critical, there have been some Pakistanis that I, met, I have met who, has, who have said that what was the purpose of October the 7th? Over 40,000 people have died. The response is that for independence, how many people died in, pa in India and Pakistan? Millions. Millions died for independence. Freedom does not come at a cheap price. But a year on, the resistance is entrenched in Gaza. A year on. They claim they killed Muhammad Daif. 
they have not killed Muhammad Dayf. They claim they killed Yahya Sinwar, they have not killed Yahya Sinwar. They claim they killed Abu Ubaidah, they have not killed Abu Ubaidah. The resistance remains entrenched, all the groups. The tunnels mainly remain intact. There was a security flow on the part of Hezbollah. Hezbollah fell into a security flow. But the reason for that is that the dynamics between Hezbollah and Hamas are different. The nature of the terrain in Lebanon is different to the nature of the terrain in Gaza. The breed of fighters in Gaza is different to the breed of fighters anywhere in the world. You will not find military guerrilla fighters, the nature of which is different to anywhere else in the world like you do in Gaza. Gaza has not only taken on the Israeli entity, Gaza has taken on the United States, the United Kingdom's military and spyware. It has taken on Germany. It has taken on France. It has taken on the Arab Middle East that has allied its, aligned itself and allied itself with Western powers, which includes Jordan, Egypt, Turkey, the Gulf states, the UAE. So one year on, the IDF has failed in its mission. So when they achieved some uh, killings, assassinations of the leadership of Hezbollah, at the moment the ratings of Netanyahu have gone through the roof. The Israelis are joyous. They are happy with Netanyahu. And now they believe a ground invasion is essential so they can kill off the resistance groups within Lebanon. Will they have success? The answer is no. Because this military, the idea, failed in Gaza, a small strip of land. I believe they will fail in Lebanon and they will fail in their project of an expanding greater Israel. Someone asks, Sheikh, you make the argument that the Syrian revolution was wrong as they would never win and resulted in more bloodshed. Why is Hamas different to that situation? The answer is uh, that the occupying forces of Israel are different to any brutal military dictat dictatorship throughout the Middle East. It's a foreign occupation. It doesn't belong there. It's like having an organ that doesn't belong in the body. As for brutal dictatorships in the Middle East, they are from the people themselves. The Baathists in Syria, they had around 100,000 members. Many of them were Sunnis. They were aff affected by the thoughts of Mish'al Aflaq, Syrian Christian, who founded the Baathist party in around 1947. But they, the Sunnis joined his ranks. These were not people of foreign occupiers. They were occupying from within. And ostensibly all the Middle Eastern governments proclaim Islam. All of them. Even Bashar al-Assad, who is a Nusayri, he proclaims Islam, not Nusayriism. So, ostensibly they are Muslim. To equate Israel with any brutal dictatorship in the Middle East is wrong. Secondly, the occupation that is in Palestine has been ongoing from 1948 and previous to 1948. To equate the two is totally wrong. So this is this requires a rethinking on those people who equate between what occurred in Syria or what occurred in Egypt and what is occurring in Palestine.
Someone asks, will Israel be conquered in 2036, 80 years, 88 years after its birth? 1948, just like the Crusades who took Jerusalem in 1099, they were destroyed in 1187. Will history repeat itself? Inshallah, we will live to see the day when Muslims will reconquer Jerusalem. We will take Jerusalem and we will pray our Salatul Fajr in Al Masjid Al Aqsa with those who will conquer the city. We will live to see that. When it occurs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Someone asks, why is Syria quiet in all of this? Are they, they next after Lebanon? As Syria cannot, is weakened, the Syrian army is weakened. They cannot have direct engagement with Israel. However, Syria is a supply route for uh, military, military groups within uh, Lebanon. Someone asks, is Bashar al-Assad the Sufyani who will send an army against Al-Imam al-Mahdi? The answer is no. Uh, the, Bash- uh, the Sufyani, he will appear after, Euf- after the Euphrates Gold River uh, war. So the Euphrates River Gold, when it appears and the war, the Sufyani will appear then. So Bashar is yet to go. He will go eventually. Someone states, can you shed some light on Talmudic Jews and Torah Jews and the exiled Jews supporting Palestine? Well, in reality, the reality is that the Talmud is, has actual anti-human teachings, the Talmud. I would advise everyone to read uh, what Israel Shahak has written. Israel Shahak, he has an entire book exposing the Talmudic Jews and their false teachings. You read through uh, that book, you'll find some of the extreme teachings that the Talmudic Jews have. Someone asks, please rehash the major and minor signs that are to occur next. We need to know, please, Sheikh. Do not have your book in my country of residence. All Muslims need guidance and help. Please enlighten us for the sake of Allah. Well, with the current war, The current occupation will end as is foretold in Surah Al-Isra. In Surah Al-Isra, Surah Ban Israel, you read the first 12 verses of Surah Al-Isra. You read Surah Al-Hashr in Al-Quran Al-Kareem. You will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has foretold, has informed us with regard to the end of the current occupation. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Ban Israel, La tufsidunna fil ardi marratain, you shall indeed cause corruption on the earth twice. Many ulama, the likes of Sheikh Mutawalli al Sha'rawi, Rahimullah, and others, they have mentioned that the second occupation is the second corruption. And that second corruption will come to an end. And even according to the Torah, what we have of the Torah, al Thamin, the eighth decade is the end of the occupation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to make that true and a reality. So the, the current occupation will end. And I believe it will end before the Euphrates gold appears. The current occupation will end 
and they will not achieve the goal of the greater Israel. That will not be achieved and they will not demolish Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Sharif. Then after that, after this occurs, after the Euphrates Gold War occurs, you have the appearance of the Sufyani and then you have the army of the Sufyani being swallowed near Al-Madina Al-Munawwara. And then after that, you have the appearance of Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. Someone asks, Assalamu alaikum Shaykh, can you shed some light on the hadith of the horn of Shaitan and the location of Najd? Location of Najd is east of Al Madina. So if you, even if you look at the map of modern Saudi Arabia, Najd is actually the east of Al Madina Al Munawwara. And Rasulullah mentioned that the Sharq, the east, is the part. Uh, from where the two horns of shaitan actually appear. Someone states, Sheikh, why are there a lack of ulama with knowledge of politics? The answer would be because they do not read upon politics and current affairs. And what do you say to this nonsense that Islam and politics don't mix? Uh, that is absurd. Islam was a deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has been revealed with a law that governs all human affairs. And the Quran is a book that was revealed to govern all human affairs and its explanation which is the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone asks, why is Afghanistan not helping Palestine? The answer is, the truthful thing is that there is no more sincere nation than Afghanistan. Afghanistan has some of the best Muslims in the world. There is no more sincere nation than Afghanistan. And there are no better Muslims than the Pashtuns and not only the Pashtuns, the Farsi speakers and Afghani Muslims they have some of the best Muslims in the world. You, and some of them live in al Madina al munawwara like Sheikh Zakri al-Bukhari and his Khulafa who live in al Madina al munawwara But the current problem is that Afghanistan just achieved independence three years ago. But if they had access to Palestine, they would be the first people to go. That is the reality of Afghanistan. Someone asks, where will Ghazwatul Hind come into all of this? Uh, the answer is Ghazwatul Hind is nothing to do with the current war. I have a lecture on my channel, on my YouTube channel on the Ghazwatul Hind. You can listen to that. The Ghazwatul Hind occurs in the time of Al-Imam Al-Mahdi radiallahu an. When Al-Imam Al-Mahdi dispatches from Palestine, from Al-Quds, which will be his capital, an army into India. 
into Hind. That is Ghazwatul Hind. Someone says the Wahhabis say Najd is in Iran and Iraq. No, Najd is not in Iran and Iraq. Najd is in the Arabian Peninsula. It's east of Al-Madin al munawwarah With regard to Al-Iraq, there are other hadiths that mention the fit and the tribulations that come out of Iraq. La- Iraq has been mentioned as a land of tribulation also. Someone asks, will Iran conquer Palestine? No, I believe Palestinians will conquer Palestine. Groups from around the world and nations like Iran supporting the resistance. Other groups will help and join the resistance, but eventually the Palestinians will free Palestine. And the Khurasanis. The Khurasanis are people from Khurasan. That is an event that will occur in the future. Someone asks the question, please, if the Khilafah is Fard Kifaya, what is Fard upon laymen, Muslims living around the world? What can we do right now? Raise awareness. Read my book, Intellectual Intifada. Intellectual Intifada is a book about the Khilaf and restoring the Caliphate. Read that book, have study circles around the book, make awareness, make videos. Those of you who are YouTube influencers or on social media, make clips from the book Intellectual Intifada. That's how you make an awareness. As laymen, make awareness regarding the Caliphate as an alternative to a way of governance that is organic, within the Muslim world. Someone asks, when's the Qadiani debate? With regard to the Qadianis, I am still waiting for them to email me. I've accepted all 10 of their conditions and they have not emailed back. So I am still waiting for them to email for a, for a, a date location and the debate to be named. Someone asks, Sheikh, I hope you are well. Are silver chain bracelets permissible to wear for males? If not, then why? The answer is only a silver ch- uh, watch, a silver ring is permitted for males. Silver chains are not permitted for males because of the prohibition found in the hadith for males to wear all types of metals uh, as jewellery is not permissible. Someone asks, is this war leading to the Euphrates Gold War which will unfold later down the line? Yes, the Euphrates Gold War will happen further down the line when only Allah knows best. Someone asks a pertinent question. Is it true uh, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi will appear post Israel's fall? Yes. We are not waiting for the Mahdi to defeat Israel. Israel will be defeated before Al-Mahdi. Someone asks, Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. I believe in the Quran it is mentioned that the Jews will be a strong nation on two occasions. Is this, is this true? The answer is that is not relating to Jews, it's relating to Bani Israel. There's a distinction between Jews and Bani Israel. There is a segment of Bani Israel. 
there is a, a segment of Bani Israel within the current Zionist occupation. And it is mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, in Surah Al-Isra, لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ Go back to those verses. Will Egypt get involved? I'm afraid not. Egypt and its army is similar to the Pakistani army. It's indebted to the IMF. Uh, Egypt currently is only looking out for its own interests. You even have the soldiers taking bribes on the borders. Will Israel be a part of the Euphrates war? Not no, Israel will, will be finished from the Middle East by that time, I believe. That is my opinion in accordance with the interpretation of the Hadith. The pager attack was a terrorist attack. How do we know that our devices are, are safe? That was the Hezbollah had, they fell short in terms of they were buying these pages, purchasing those pages. They had a lapse in security in checking the supplier and also checking the pages in terms of opening those pages. That was specifically targeted towards Hezbollah because Hezbollah is a military, militant group. But you should not be worried with regard to civilians being supplied with such type of uh, ammunition. Someone asks, what is the ruling on King Abdullah, MBS and the leader of Morocco, are they Muslim? Yes, they are Muslims. We do not do takfir of them. They are Muslims, irrelevant to what disagreements people may have with them. Someone asks, Salam Sheikh, what are your thoughts on the concept of greater Israel? Will it become a reality currently or during the time of the Dajjal? I believe it will not become a, uh, a reality. I believe we will defeat the current occupation and there will never be a greater Israel. But when a Dajjal appears, when a Dajjal goes from nation to nation, that is greater Israel in the time of a Dajjal. But the time of a Dajjal is not yet. A Dajjal has yet to appear. He only appears after Al-Mahdi and after Al-Mahdi conquers Constantinople. Someone asks, Sheikh, I am currently traveling so I have not been able to ask you this in the mosque. If the dua of a travel is always accepted, what is the best dua I can give for Palestine, myself and you? The best dua is our well-being, our safety and a victory for Palestine, a victory for the Muslims, insha'Allah ta'ala. Does wearing metals other than gold and silver in prayer necessitate repeating the salah? The answer is no, you do not need to repeat the salah. Will the three princes fighting over the treasure of the Kaaba be after or before the Euphrates war? That will happen during the Euphrates war. So the three princes 
fighting for the Euphrates goal will occur during the Euphrates goal. What will cause Israel's destruction? The answer is its hubris, its arrogance will destroy it. Who will take over Istanbul from Turkey? Al-Imam al-Mahdi in the future. That is not a current event. Someone asks, Salam Sheikh, please tell me how would you prepare for revision? What things would you do before memorizing a lecture, whether English or Islamic? Well, I do not memorize lectures. You would have to make, I make bullet points if I need to make notes or remember points, I make bullet points. Everyone has their own unique method. So someone asks, how will Palestinians conquer Palestine when there is a prophecy that states Khurasan will conquer it? Yes, I mentioned that also. I said the people of Khurasan will also be involved in that conquering of Palestine. But there are, there are two different events. The flags of Khurasan that are mentioned that the Khurasanis will come from the east and place the flags in Al-Quds Sharif are actually during the time of Al-Mahdi. That occurs during the time of Imam al-Mahdi. So that's a second conquering for which then Imam al-Mahdi makes uh, Al-Quds al-Sharif his capital. But that occurs after the current occupation. They are two different events. Someone asks, any updates on the red heifer? Haven't seen no hair, no hide of her. The answer is true. Uh, the red heifer hype has died down. It seems that the Zionist occupation have not carried out the red heifer sacrifice. That must be because their genetically modified red heifer must have grown a white hair or two or a few hairs, which invalidates the condition of the red heifer. And the hype of the red heifer has died down. That could be because the potential of sacrificing a red heifer could mobilize the Muslims against the entity, Israel. And, we, and I believe now is the time for us Muslims to mobilize. Unity is essence. Unity is essential. All Muslim groups must unite. All jama'at must unite against the common goal for the common objective of the freedom of Palestine. That's an absolute imperative. We cannot allow political division, ethnic division, linguistical division. We cannot allow sectarian division. None of that with regard to that one objective. Let me tell you something. When we conquer Al-Quds Sharif, when we conquer Al-Quds Sharif, I will be the first Sunni debater against all the sects. I will debate the Shia, I will debate the Wahhabis. I will be at the forefront of debating them. But for now, I am saying that when it comes to Palestine, we have a common goal and we are united in that common objective. As far as theological debates, we have been having these debates for hundreds of years. I will continue having those debates after we conquer Palestine, after we conquer Al-Quds Sharif. But the debates will carry on. The, who said the debates will stop? But in that common objective, we will continue. That we have that one goal and we are united in that goal, which is to defeat the IDF and to conquer Al-Quds Sharif.
So inshallah ta'ala, I will be finishing uh, this live stream and just some last advice is that the coming days and the coming weeks and the coming months will be explosive. Maintain the unity, maintain the common objective, maintain our common objective of freeing Palestine and emancipating Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa so we can all go and pray in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa under Muslim rule. Do not allow division, do not allow any type of divide on this one given issue. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give success to those who are standing up, give success to the people of Palestine and their allies. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Yemen, Lebanon, all these groups, all these uh, nations that are involved, that Allah gives tawfiq to jo- for Jordan to take the right initiative. Allah gives tawfiq to Egypt and Turkey and Pakistan to take on the right initiative. Insha'Allah ta'ala, jazakumullahu khayran, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.